morning. We're a little late. We had four different people stop us at the gym today and ask us about food. Yes. So we were talking about food. And I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over and over again. Isn't it fun? Eat plants. It is fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, how was your workout? I had a good workout today. That's you do? I always have good workouts these days. That's good. Uh, today was back. Um, back calves. And I did the cardio blitz at the end. Yeah, I saw you on the bike. Yeah. yeah. I did good. cardio today. And uh, that's why I have my jacket on. I'm a little clammy, so I'm cold, yicky. Nice. <laughs> um, did you want to watch it to so make sure we don't pixelate? Yes, well, let's Laura's make sure. Here. She'll tell us if we do. Right, but still, let's um, just keep an eye on it. Yeah. So what are you having for breakfast? I am having oatmeal today. Rolled um, oats for you? Rolled oats. Uh, yes, old-fashioned rolled oats for me. Plug and in the headset or it'll annoy you. Yes, and it will annoy me, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, I'll tell um, you, you know me there, love. I do know you well. And oh, all your standard stuff, all your seeds, all your uh, berries and right. banana and whatnot. So that's good. Hmm, that's um, interesting. So today we wanted to talk to you about good fat. And I put that in, in air quotes, good fat. Because yesterday, again, I had an adamant discussion with someone who was telling me olive oil is good for your heart. And I was giving her all the science on why that's not true, and she just said, well, I disagree with you, and she walked away from me. Well, you know. And that's fine. You know, if people want to believe that olive oil is good for them, that's fine. But So here's the thing. Is olive oil better for you than bacon grease? Yeah. Or lard? It is. Yeah. But is it healthy? No. no, it's not. No. And here's why. So let me, let me explain that a little bit. Um, Olive oil is a processed food, right? So olives are a whole food. For olives, that you eat the whole thing. It has the fiber, it has all the nutrients, all the everything. Olive oil, the olives have been pressed. And no matter whether you get virgin olive oil, extra virgin, I don't know how you get what extra. I actually don't know <laughs> what it means, but that's funny, extra virgin. But it doesn't matter. It's still concentrated fat, yeah. Yeah. which means that it's 4,000 calories a pound. It's the highest calorie density food you can put in your system. Right. And there's, they've done studies, and if you want to see the science, I'm happy to, to find the actual articles and share the science with you, um, is that when you eat olive oil, or any oil, regardless, and this is coconut oil too, I know there's a bunch of you out there who love your coconut oil. Coconut oil too, same deal, processed fat. Your blood gets gunky. Uh, it, it like it, it looks different, like it looks cloudy, um, and it, it gets sticky, and it's not it's not good for you. Your endometrial cells um, really, you know, need need to not have the fat in your in your system. Right. So oils, any oils, processed food, high calorie, not not great for you. So then the question is, okay, well, what about like nuts and seeds and avocados? So let's talk about those. Those are good fats, they're whole foods, right? If you're eating whole foods, that's a plus. Now, avocados, very high yes. in calories. Yes. In a pound of avocados, 750 calories. Now, obviously, none of us eat a pound of avocados at a time. But, <laughs> we don't. You know, well, I hope not. Maybe if we eat guacamole, we might. That's right. possible. But, so, avocado is good for you, but... They are a high calorie food. They are a high fat food. Right. So if you're trying to lose weight, if you've been diagnosed with heart disease and you're trying to reverse it, if you have diabetes and you're trying to reverse it, you're probably going to want to avoid the avocados because yes, yeah. whole food, great quality fat, but you want your body to use its own fat and burn its own fat and get fat out of your bloodstream. So that's the goal. Next. Go ahead. I say that goes to the whole point we talked about yesterday with Dr. Esselstyn. Is he's very strict. Very there strict. Is, you know, no seeds, no nuts, no avocados. But he deals with people that are extreme. Are knocking on death's door. Yeah, they basically were told they're not going to live. They're not going to see the next day. Basically, type of type of on death's door. And and you know, he's done miraculous things by making sure that they stay on a very, very strict, strict and lots budget. of greens. Lots of greens. And so you you guys know we eat a lot of seeds. You see us like we we have our the hemp hearts are out here this morning. Right. We've got almonds sitting here that we were eating this morning. Um, we've got the what are these called? Chia seeds. Chia seeds. Chia seeds. I wow. never say it right. I'm yes. trying. Um, 
We have pumpkin seeds. We have sunflower seeds. Um, I put tahini in our um, hummus when I make hummus, right. which is made out of sunflower seeds. So we eat a lot of seeds. Now here's the thing. Russ and I are at our ideal weight. When we were working on losing weight, we were working on getting closer to our ideal weight, we were not eating as many seeds because right. we wanted our bodies to burn the fat we had on our frame. Exactly. You know, it's either the fat you wear or the fat you eat. Those right. are your two options. <laughs> and so if you're trying to lose weight, if that's your goal, then you're going to want to limit the amount of seeds that you intake. Right. Um, the one thing that Dr. Esselstein does talk about, and I have some sitting here, is ground flaxseed because mm -hmm. it's got some really good stuff in it. Don't eat a ton of it. Right. Obviously, it's not going to be your main source of food, but you can sprinkle it on stuff because it does have some really good quality stuff in it. So they do, and, and there are no nuts, no seeds, no avocados, right. you know, eliminate that's, that's the even one. plant fat. Right. They do say the one exception is to eat some, some flax seed. So I'm not even going to get into animal fat because it's just yeah. horrible for you. Don't eat that. You know that. Yeah, we, we say, that, we say that all the time. Right. But when someone says to you that olive oil is heart healthy, mm. that is a complete misnomer. They've been misled by the science. It's better for you than the saturated fat that you find in animal products, but it is not healthy. That is a mistake. Right. So people then ask me, well, if you're not cooking with any oil, how do you saute vegetables? How do you, what do you do? You can use water and you can use vegetable broth right. and it sautes just fine. Now, to be fair, you have to watch it a little more closely yes. because it will burn if you, do, if you let it all evaporate off. Right. So, you can't just, with olive oil, you can throw your vegetables in the pan, throw olive oil in it, stir it, walk away. Right. If you're cooking with vegetable broth or water, you can't walk away. It's going to burn. So you do have to keep an eye on it, keep stirring it, keep adding more liquid as you need it. But they will steam beautifully. Right. And I've also found that a lot of recipes that I make, they call for, you know, saute all the vegetables till soft before you put it in the soup. And I'm like, why? Yeah, the soup's going to soften them. I so mean. when I make soup, if it calls for things like carrots and celery and onions and peppers, and I put peppers whether it calls for it or not, <laughs> and mushrooms and any of those things, yes. I don't saute them first. I throw it all in the pot together, and I'm like, cook, right. off you go, good yeah. luck. And I always find a way to throw kale and um, spinach Dark in Dark greens. Throw Dark them, greens. If you, even if the recipe doesn't call for it, throw them in there anyway. Yeah, you know, you chop them up really small. I mean, this just the... Uh, the um, Health benefits of those, of of those green dark stuff. greens yep. is just phenomenal. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, you do use avocado oil. Well, you're you're not as strictly plant based as we are, but yeah, we have avocado avocado bleh, 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 avocado bleh. oil. Got my tongue tied around my yeah. eye teeth. I yeah. can't see what I'm saying. We have avocado oil in the house because I was using it um, up until probably three months ago. Right. Um, when we started learning more about the avocado oil. Yeah. Good morning, Pat. Oh, hey, fasting Pat. day for you. Very cool. Nice. I did not know you were doing intermittent fasting. Nice. We'll have to talk about that next time I see you at the gym. That's awesome. You'll have to let me know how it goes. Um, yeah, so we don't use um, oil in the house. The one exception, I guess there's two exceptions. Russ has one and I have one. When he has popcorn, right. he does still put um, a little bit of butter right. on his popcorn. About a tablespoon. About a tablespoon on a big but thing of popcorn. A big thing of popcorn. But um, in my class that I'm taking, which I'm almost done with, I should be done today with my class, um, they did talk about something else you can add, and I wrote it down, and I didn't, I don't have it here. So I have to find that, but I'll let you know. We'll have Russ try it, and we'll see if that works in his popcorn, where right. you can add, you know, because the issue that we're having, or he's having, is that if you want to add salt, and of course, if you're uh, high blood pressure, or you're, yeah, you know, don't use salt. Don't use salt. If you're trying to cure heart disease, don't use salt. But if you're healthy, and you're at your ideal weight, Adding a little bit of salt is not a huge deal. Um, it won't stick to the popcorn because he makes right. air pop popcorn. It won't stick. Right. So that's kind of what he's using the butter for is for stickiness, yeah. so, which is what it does to your blood. Right, it exactly. Blood so sticky. there you go. There's the proof. <laughs> so that's a problem. Right. Um, that, so we'll let so you know. The, the alternative is that um, we're reading is that using um, nutritional yeast is really good on popcorn. Mm -hmm. The problem is... I can't figure a way to get it to stick on the popcorn. So she she saw something. My class had something it, last night. I, it, but it went. In, it's not in my brain. Right. I can't find that synapse. When I find it, I'll let you know. 
And my exception, which I need to overcome, and I've told you guys this before, is salad dressing. I happen to really like salad dressing, and I don't use a lot of it. I've started using more you know, applesauce and just a little bit of salad dressing, but uh, that's my weakness is salad dressing, which is not plant-based a lot of times, and when it is, it's usually like corn oil, which right. is horrible for you. Yeah. So I do have to overcome my salad dressing. That's right. one thing I'm still working on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it, it's important to know that if you, the, the, one, the one takeaway for, for you is olive oil is not heart healthy. That's a misnomer. And if you tell someone that, they will argue with you. But I can give you the science. If you want the science, I'll give you the science. Right. Um, avocado oil, coconut oil, any oil, whatever it is, oil, it's straight fat. Right. And it's not healthy for right. you. And then in nuts and seeds, very healthy. But if you're trying to cure or trying to reverse um, heart disease, heart disease yeah. diabetes, obesity, um, high cholesterol, any of those kind of things, you're going to want to really minimize those or maybe eliminate them for your diet right. until you reach. And work um, with your doctor, obviously. Right, obviously. You know, work um, with your doctor. Let them know what you're doing. And, and you know. might have to educate your doctor. There's a, right. As we've said before, medical doctors get very, very little nutritional education. Right. And so what they know is from mainstream media, which – don't even get me started on mainstream media. Right. We'll be here all day. Exactly. But you may have to educate your doctor, which means you may need the science. So if you need the science, come and talk to me. I'm more than happy to share the science with you so that right. you can then share it with your doctor. If you're getting pushback from your doctor about trying to go whole food, whole, right. whole right. food plant based. I'm having trouble talking. Right. Today. And you can always tell your doctors to reference um, the people, the doctors that we talk about, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Gregor. Um, Dr. Um, T. Colin Campbell, Campbell Dr. Esselstein. Dr. Esselstein. I'm rattling these all off right, until right. I can expect you to But if you want to know, we'll, we'll post it. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. you know. I was watching um, a talk today when I was doing cardio. It's the, um, he was looking at the top 15 killers in the United States and going through each of them and talking about how a plant-based diet in, impacts those diseases. Right. And I will post it. It's an hour and a half long, so I know most of you won't be able to watch it. But I'll post it on the R&R Journey page. So for those of you who are interested, Dr. Greger does go through the top 15 causes of death in, in America and outlines how each of them can be um, avoided, reversed, and even cured, some of them with a the plant-based right. diet. So right. if you're interested in the science, he yeah. has a lot of it. And as we say, the number one killer is cardiovascular disease, and that is the absolute one that should that could be eliminated. Yeah, you could eliminate Absolutely it. eliminated from the from. It doesn't uh, have to kill Russia. another human ever. Right, right. So, but that's what I wanted to tell you guys about um, fat and good fats. Um, yes, they are, but you only need a tiny little bit. You know, yeah. like you, an adult needs five to eight percent of their calories from protein, and your amount you need from fat is, you know, minuscule. You should be eating starches, starches. healthy whole food starches and carbs, which are good for you. Right. So that's what I wanted to share today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your comments, guys. I'm going. Yeah. I'll, I'll go through and respond to them when we get when we get off. And uh, make sure if you're enjoying these and getting benefit from these, do like and share them right. because I can't help people if they don't know I exist. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so please do that for us. Right. Did you have anything you needed to add? No, today? I think you had. You said a lot today, I so did. I'll let them absorb it. <laughs> All right. All right. And so with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great we'll day, guys. We'll see you guys. tomorrow.